Hi friends, if you place an object in front of a plane mirror, how many images will you see of the object? One, right? Now if you have two mirrors, how many images will you see? You must be thinking two, right? But if you keep the two mirrors at an angle like this, can you see more than two images will be formed? In fact, if you change the angle between the mirrors, more images are formed. It's like magic. Two mirrors at an angle are called inclined mirrors and that's going to be the topic of this video. We will look at a magic formula that will help us predict the number of images. So let's get started. Before we begin, I'd like to let you know that we have full courses on science, maths, coding and artificial intelligence on our website and our Android app Manucha Academy. You can try these courses for free. I'll put the links below. So do check it out. Alright, let's get started on this inclined mirror topic. We will start by keeping the two mirrors flat so that it acts like one mirror. I will use this dice as an object. As expected, we can see only one image of the dice. Now if I bend the two mirrors so that they are at an angle of 120 degrees, how many images do we have here? Can you see the two images? Now if I decrease the angle further so that the mirrors are at 90 degrees perpendicular to each other, now you can see that the number of images has increased to 3. There is a formula that will help us predict the number of images of two inclined mirrors. The formula goes something like this. If the two mirrors are placed at an angle theta and the object is placed symmetrically between the two mirrors, that is at the same distance from the two mirrors, then the number of images n equals 360 divided by theta minus 1. That means the number of images is 360 degrees divided by the angle between the two mirrors minus 1. So you can use this formula to predict the number of images easily. Let's test our formula for the case when the two mirrors are at an angle of 120 degrees. So you can substitute theta equal to 120 in the formula. The number of images is going to be 360 degrees divided by 120 minus 1. So that's going to be 3 minus 1, 2 images. And this is exactly what we observed. We can see two images being formed just like the formula it predicted when the mirrors are at an angle of 120 degrees. Now let's test the formula when the two mirrors are at an angle of 90 degrees. So once again, substitute theta equal to 90 degree in our formula. The number of images n will be equal to 360 divided by 90 minus 1. So that's 4 minus 1 which equals 3 images. And as you can see, 3 images are formed when the mirrors are at 90 degree or perpendicular to each other. So our magic formula is working. Now let's decrease the angle between the two mirrors to 72 degrees. Now you can see 4 images of the dice are formed. And if you plug in 72 degrees in our formula, you will get n equal to 360 by 72, which is 5 minus 1, 4 images exactly what we saw in the two mirrors. Now let's go ahead and make the angle between the two mirrors even smaller. Let's make it 60 degrees. How many images do you see now? That's right, 5. And once again, why don't you test the formula yourself and you'll see you will get 5 images. So the formula matches our observation. Now I'm going to decrease the angle between the two mirrors to 50 degrees. How many images can you see here? That's right. Can you see that there are now six images? Let's try out our formula once again. So if you substitute theta equal to 50 degree into the formula, you get n equal to 360 degrees divided by 50 minus 1. But 360 divided by 50 is 7.2. So we are getting 6.2 images here. But remember, you cannot get a fractional number of images. So you basically have to remove the decimal. Even if the decimal is above 0.5, take note that do not round off the number. Okay, just remove off the decimal. So I'm going to delete that 0.2 and it's going to give me six images. So see, the formula gives us the correct answer 
as long as you use it correctly. Do not take the decimal value. Just throw away the decimal and you can see we are getting six images as exactly what we observed in the mirrors. So as you saw, when we keep decreasing the angle between the two plane mirrors, the number of images keeps on increasing. Now we have seen from our experiments that two plane mirrors inclined at an angle can form many images. But let me ask you a fundamental question. There is only one object and two mirrors. Each mirror should form only one image of the object. So there should be two images, right? So how are more than two images being formed by these mirrors? What do you think? Let's analyze this by taking the simple example of two mirrors that are placed perpendicular to each other. That is, the angle between the two mirrors is 90 degrees. Now let's place an object like a dice symmetrically from the two mirrors. That is, at an equal distance from the two mirrors. Now due to reflection of light in mirror M1, the dice will form an image I1 as you can see here. And due to reflection of light in mirror M2, another image I2 will be formed. These are two images. So how is the third image being produced? The trick is that image I1 acts as an object for mirror M2. And due to reflection of light at M2, it will form another image I3. Note that the mirror does not have to be exactly in front of the object. It can be at a side like this. But if the rays of light can reach the mirror, it will form an image. Now you must be thinking that I2 can also act as an object for the other mirror M1. And due to reflection of light at M1, it will form another image. But the interesting thing is that this image will exactly fall at I3. So there will be in total only three images, I1, I2 and I3. And four images will not be formed because at I3, both the images are overlapping. Another very interesting thing about this case is that if you place a compass at the point where the two mirrors meet and you draw a circle, then the object and all the three images formed will all lie on the circle. So this is a very interesting case where you can see the object and all the three images are equidistant from the center there where the two mirrors are meeting. So they are all lying on the circle like this. Now you know how two inclined mirrors can give you multiple images. I have an interesting question for you. What if you have two mirrors that are placed parallel to each other and an object is placed between the two mirrors? Now, how many images are going to be formed? Do let me know your answers by putting it in the comments below. One hint is that you might have seen this case in your everyday life. So think about the two mirror parallel case and let me know your answers by putting it in the comments below. I promise to reply to your answers. Friends, I hope the concept of two inclined mirrors and its formula is crystal clear to you now. So do hit the like button and share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Please hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And do check out the full courses on our website and Android app. Our website is manuchaacademy.com and our Android app is Manucha Academy. I'll put the links below. So do check it out because we have full courses on physics, chemistry, biology, maths, coding, and artificial intelligence. In these courses, you're gonna get live classes, interactive videos, quizzes, questions, mock tests, and revision notes. So what are you waiting for? Do check out the links below and do share it out with your friends. So stay connected with us and just keep learning.